These are angels. Even if you haven't touched the Bible, you probably have an idea on what they look like. They're those elegant heavenly beings with long white robes, swan-like wings, and perhaps a halo on top. We also know what angel babies or cherubs look like those small, chubby, cute infants clasping a bow and arrow, the kind of thing you might see on a Valentine's Day card. Except, well, that's not what angels actually look like according to the Bible. These are biblically accurate angels. These horrifying abominations are more suited to an H.B. Lovecraft novel, not really the Bible. So what are these things? Why do they look this way? And how have we got angels so wrong? The Old Testament, also known as the Hebrew Bible or Tanakh, is a collection of ancient texts that form the foundation of both Jewish and Christian religious traditions. The writing of the Old Testament spans several centuries from approximately the 12th century BCE to the 2nd century BCE. These texts were composed in the ancient Near East, specifically in regions that are today part of modern-day Israel and Palestine. The Old Testament is divided into three main sections. The Torah, or Pentateuch, includes the first five books traditionally attributed to Moses. These books cover the creation of the world, the history of the early patriarchs, the exodus from Egypt, and the establishment of Israel's laws and covenant with God. The Navim, or Prophets, contains historical accounts and prophecies, including books like Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, and the writings of major and minor prophets, such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, the Ketuvim, or writings, is a diverse collection that includes poetry, wisdom literature, and other writings, such as Psalms, Proverbs, Job, and the narrative of Esther. The Old Testament is not just a religious text, but also a rich tapestry of history, law, poetry, and prophecy. It reflects the cultural, social, and religious life of the ancient Israelites. Understanding its context helps us grasp the origins of concepts like angels, which are integral to its narrative. The word angel comes from the Greek word angelos, which means messenger. This term was adopted into the English language through the Latin angelus. However, the concept of angels predates the Greek term and has its roots in the Hebrew word malak, which also means messenger. In Hebrew, malak refers to a divine or human messenger sent by God to convey his will or perform specific tasks. For example, Genesis 32 1-2 states, Jacob also went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is the camp of God. So he named that place Mahanaim. Here, the term Malak signifies the messengers of God who interact with Jacob. The shift from the Hebrew, Malak, to the Greek, Angelus Okred, during the Hellenistic period, when Jewish scriptures were translated into Greek in a version known as the Septuagint. This translation helped spread the concept of angels throughout the Greek-speaking world, eventually influencing early Christian theology and the broader Western understanding of angels. Angels, or Malach, play various pivotal roles in the Old Testament, acting as divine messengers, protectors, and agents of God's will. Their appearances are often marked by awe-inspiring events and significant messages. Angels frequently deliver God's messages to humans. In Genesis 18, 2, three angels visit Abraham to inform him of the impending birth of his son Isaac and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. This encounter underscores their role as bearers of divine news and executors of God's plans. The text states, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. Angels also serve as protectors and guides for the people of Israel. In Exodus 23.20, God promises to send an angel to guide and protect the Israelites on their journey to the Promised Land. See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. Angels often act as agents of divine judgment, executing God's will against those who oppose Him. The most notable example is the angel of death in the Passover story, Exodus 12.23 where the angel strikes down the firstborn of Egypt. 
When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the doorframe, and will pass over that doorway, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Angels sometimes intercede on behalf of humans or mediate between God and man. In Daniel chapter 10, 12 to 14, the angel Gabriel appears to Daniel after he has been praying for understanding and revelation. Gabriel explains the delay in his arrival, citing a spiritual battle. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. These roles highlight the multifaceted nature of angels in the Old Testament. They are not just passive messengers, but active participants in God's plan, bridging the divine and human realms. The concept of a hierarchy of heavenly beings is deeply rooted in both Jewish and Christian traditions. This hierarchy organizes the various types of angels and celestial beings according to their roles and proximity to God. One of the most influential classifications comes from the medieval Jewish scholar Maimonides, who detailed the different ranks of angels in his works. In this hierarchy, the lowest rank includes the angels we most commonly recognize, the Malak, who serve primarily as messengers. Above them are more powerful and complex beings, each with unique responsibilities and characteristics that set them apart. Among these ranks, we find the cherubim. Unlike the cherubs of popular culture, these beings are described in the Bible as having four faces and four wings, embodying a combination of human and animal traits. They serve not only as guardians, but also as bearers of God's throne, reflecting their significant status. Higher in the hierarchy are the seraphim, depicted in the book of Isaiah as having six wings, two for flying, two for covering their faces, and two for covering their feet. Their primary role is to attend to God, continuously singing praises and maintaining the sanctity of his presence. The term seraphim means the burning ones, indicating their association with fire and purity. At the pinnacle of this celestial order are the ophanim, or the wheels. These beings are described in Ezekiel's vision as interlocking wheels covered in eyes, moving in perfect harmony with the spirit of the living creatures they accompany. Their function is to carry the throne of God, symbolizing His omnipresence and divine authority. This hierarchy is not just a list of roles, but reflects a structured cosmology where each type of being has a specific purpose. The Malak, or ordinary angels, are closer to humanity, acting as intermediaries who deliver God's messages and carry out His commands on earth. They are the angels most frequently encountered in biblical narratives, appearing as ordinary men and often performing tasks that directly impact human affairs. In contrast, the cherubim and seraphim are more closely associated with the divine realm. Their complex and awe-inspiring forms serve to highlight their sacred duties. The cherubim, with their multiple faces and wings, guard the Garden of Eden and the Ark of the Covenant, symbolizing God's protection and presence. The seraphim, with their fiery appearance, continually praise God, emphasizing the holiness and majesty of the divine throne. The ophanim, or wheels, occupy a unique and mysterious position in this hierarchy. Their appearance is otherworldly, and their role is to support and move the divine chariot, representing the dynamic and ever-present nature of God's rule. They illustrate the complexity and depth of the heavenly order, reflecting the infinite aspects of God's creation. Understanding this hierarchy helps us appreciate the diverse and multifaceted nature of heavenly beings as described in the Bible. It challenges our modern perceptions of angels, inviting us to explore the rich and intricate tapestry of biblical angelology. This structured order not only serves theological purposes, but also offers insights into the ancient worldview, where every being has a place and a function within the grand design of the universe. 
The cherubim are one of the most fascinating and misunderstood types of heavenly beings in biblical literature. Far removed from the chubby, winged infants often depicted in art and popular culture, the cherubim in the Bible are described as powerful, awe-inspiring creatures with a unique and complex appearance. These beings play significant roles in various biblical narratives, often associated with God's presence and divine mysteries. In the book of Ezekiel, the prophet provides a vivid and detailed description of the cherubim during a profound visionary experience. In Ezekiel chapter 1, 5 to 10, he describes them as living creatures with a human form but with distinct differences. Each cherub has four faces, that of a human, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. They also possess four wings, with two wings spread upward, touching those of the other creatures, and two wings covering their bodies. Their legs are straight, and the soles of their feet are like those of a calf, gleaming like burnished bronze. Under their wings they have human hands on their four sides. The text says, in the middle of it was something like four living creatures. This was their appearance. They were of human form. Each had four faces, and each of them had four wings. Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like burnished bronze. Ezekiel's vision continues with a description of their movement and interaction with the spirit of the living creatures. They move straight ahead, without turning as they move, following the direction of the Spirit. Lightning and fire accompany their presence, enhancing their otherworldly and powerful nature. The imagery is both majestic and terrifying, emphasizing their role as guardians of the divine realm. The description of the cherubim shares striking similarities with various mythological creatures from ancient Mesopotamian cultures. For instance, the Lamassu, a protective deity from Assyrian and Babylonian mythology, often depicted as a winged bull or lion with a human head, bears a close resemblance to the biblical cherubim. Similarly, the Babylonian Shedu, another protective spirit, combines human and animal features in a manner reminiscent of Ezekiel's vision. These creatures were believed to guard sacred spaces, much like the cherubim who guard the Garden of Eden and the Ark of the Covenant in biblical tradition. The cherubim also share characteristics with the Egyptian Sphinx and the Hittite Griffin. The Sphinx, with its lion's body and human head, served as a guardian figure in ancient Egyptian culture, protecting temples and royal tombs. The Hittite Griffin, with the body of a lion and the wings of an eagle, also functioned as a protective entity. These cross-cultural similarities suggest a shared symbolic language in the ancient Near East, where hybrid creatures represented strength, protection, and divine authority. The cultural influences on the biblical depiction of cherubim are evident in the way these beings embody the attributes of both human and animal figures, symbolizing their role as intermediaries between the divine and human realms. The imagery used to describe cherubim likely drew from the rich tapestry of mythological motifs prevalent in the surrounding cultures of the ancient Israelites. This cultural exchange and adaptation allowed the biblical authors to convey complex theological concepts through familiar and powerful symbols. The seraphim are among the most exalted beings in the hierarchy of heavenly creatures. Often depicted as fiery, six-winged entities, the seraphim hold a special place in biblical literature, particularly in their role as attendants to God's throne. Unlike the more familiar images of angels, the seraphim's description emphasizes their unique and awe-inspiring nature. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet provides a detailed description of his vision of the seraphim. In Isaiah chapter 6, 1-3, he recounts a powerful and transformative experience in the temple, where he sees the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and the seraphim standing above him. The seraphim each have six wings. With two wings they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly. They continually call out to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. 
Exploring the origins of the Seraphim reveals interesting connections to ancient Near Eastern symbolism. The Hebrew word Saraph also refers to a venomous serpent or a fiery serpent. This association with serpents ties the Seraphim to the imagery of the cobra in ancient Egyptian culture. In ancient Egypt, the cobra, often referred to as the Flaming One, was a powerful symbol of royalty and divine protection. The uraeus, a representation of the cobra, was commonly worn by pharaohs on their headdresses, symbolizing their divine authority and connection to the gods. The seraphim's connection to the Egyptian cobra is more than just symbolic. In many ways, it reflects the shared cultural and religious motifs between the ancient Israelites and their neighboring civilizations. The cobra's attributes of fierceness, protection, and divine association are mirrored in the biblical portrayal of the seraphim. This cultural exchange highlights how ancient peoples incorporated and adapted each other's symbols to express their own theological concepts. The Ophanim, also known as the Wheels, are some of the most enigmatic and fascinating beings in the biblical hierarchy of heavenly creatures. Their unique and complex description sets them apart from other angelic entities, making them a subject of great intrigue and mystery. Unlike the more humanoid forms of other angels, the Ophanim's appearance is wholly otherworldly, emphasizing the incomprehensible and transcendent nature of the divine realm. In the book of Ezekiel, the prophet provides a detailed and vivid description of the Ophanim during his vision by the Kebar River. In Ezekiel 1, 15 to 21, he describes them as wheels within wheels, their appearance like gleaming barrel. Each wheel has a high and awesome rim filled with eyes all around. These wheels move in unison with the four living creatures, the cherubim, accompanying them wherever the spirit would go. The text states, as I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. They sparkled like topaz, and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be made like a wheel intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would go in any one of the four directions the creatures faced. The wheels did not change direction as the creatures went. Their rims were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. Ezekiel continues to describe the remarkable coordination between the wheels and the living creatures. When the creatures moved, the wheels moved alongside them. When the creatures rose from the earth, the wheels rose too for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. This unity of movement and purpose underscores the Ophanim's integral role in the divine chariot, carrying the throne of God and symbolizing his omnipresence and divine authority. The Ophanim's extraordinary appearance has led to various interpretations throughout history. One interpretation is that the wheels symbolize the omniscience of God, with the eyes representing his ability to see and know all things. The interlocking wheels might signify the interconnectedness of creation and the seamless operation of divine will in the cosmos. Another interpretation suggests that Ezekiel's vision of the Ophanim could be metaphorical, representing the complexity and mystery of God's ways. The wheels within wheels and the eyes all around might symbolize the unfathomable and multidimensional nature of divine wisdom and action. This interpretation aligns with the view that prophetic visions often use symbolic language to convey deeper spiritual truths. Some scholars and enthusiasts propose more unconventional interpretations. A popular theory among certain circles is that Ezekiel's description of the Ophanim resembles that of a modern-day UFO, suggesting that the prophet might have witnessed an extraterrestrial encounter. This theory, while intriguing, lacks substantial evidence and is generally not supported by mainstream biblical scholarship. 
Others suggest that Ezekiel's vision might have been influenced by his cultural and religious context. The imagery of wheels and eyes could have roots in the iconography of surrounding civilizations, such as Mesopotamian and Babylonian art, where winged discs and divine chariots were common motifs. Despite the various interpretations, there remains a significant amount of uncertainty about the true nature of the Ophanim. They are mentioned only in the book of Ezekiel, and their appearance and role are not elaborated upon elsewhere in the Bible. This singular and unique description leaves much to speculation and interpretation, contributing to the enduring mystery and fascination surrounding these beings. In addition to the cherubim, seraphim, and ophanim, the Bible mentions several other notable heavenly beings that play significant roles in the divine hierarchy. These beings are often depicted in various ways, each with unique attributes and responsibilities that contribute to the overall structure of the celestial realm. Among these beings are the archangels, a term not explicitly used in the Old Testament but prevalent in later Jewish and Christian texts. The archangels, including Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, are high-ranking angels entrusted with special duties. Michael is often depicted as a warrior angel, leading God's armies against the forces of evil. In Daniel 10.13 and Revelation 12.7-9, Michael is portrayed as a protector and leader in heavenly battles. Gabriel, on the other hand, serves as a messenger angel, delivering important revelations and prophecies. In the book of Daniel, Daniel 8, 16, 9, 21, and the New Testament, Luke 1, 19, 26, Gabriel announces significant events such as the births of John the Baptist and Jesus. Raphael is featured prominently in the book of Tobit, a deuterocanonical text where he acts as a guide and healer. Another group of heavenly beings is the angels of the Lord. These beings often appear in the Old Testament as messengers and agents of God's will, but their exact nature and hierarchy remain somewhat ambiguous. For instance, in Genesis 22, 11-12, the angel of the Lord intervenes to stop Abraham from sacrificing his son Isaac, demonstrating their role as intermediaries and executors of divine commands. The heavenly host is another collective term used in the Bible to describe the multitude of angels that serve and worship God. In passages like 1 Kings 22.19, the prophet Micaiah sees the Lord sitting on his throne, surrounded by all the host of heaven. This imagery emphasizes the grandeur and immense number of these celestial beings, all praising and serving the Almighty. Comparing these biblical depictions with cultural representations reveals fascinating similarities and differences. In many ancient Near Eastern cultures, such as those of the Assyrians, Babylonians, and Egyptians, there were also beliefs in a hierarchy of divine beings. These cultures often depicted their gods and divine messengers with anthropomorphic features, sometimes combined with animal traits, similar to the cherubim and other biblical angels. For example, the Assyrian and Babylonian Lamassu, which are protective deities with human heads, wings, and the bodies of bulls or lions, bear a striking resemblance to the biblical cherubim. These beings were thought to guard important locations, much like the cherubim guarding the Garden of Eden and the Ark of the Covenant. In ancient Greek culture, the concept of divine messengers was embodied in the form of Hermes, who served as the messenger of the gods. Hermes's role as a swift and communicative deity mirrors the function of angels like Gabriel in the Bible. Similarly, the Roman god Mercury, who inherited many of Hermes's attributes, also served as a divine messenger, further illustrating the cross-cultural presence of this archetype. In medieval Christian art and literature, the archangels and other heavenly beings were often depicted with distinct iconography that emphasized their roles and attributes. Michael was frequently shown with a sword or spear, combating demons and evil forces, while Gabriel was often portrayed holding a lily, symbolizing purity and his role as a herald of divine messages. 
The depiction of the heavenly host in Christian art often includes choirs of angels with instruments, singing praises to God, reflecting their continuous worship as described in biblical texts. This imagery has influenced countless works of art, music, and literature throughout history, cementing the visual and conceptual portrayal of these heavenly beings in the cultural imagination. The cultural and historical context of the biblical descriptions of angels is deeply rooted in the ancient Near Eastern world where the Old Testament texts were written. This region, which includes modern-day Israel, Palestine, Egypt, and Mesopotamia, was a melting pot of diverse cultures, religions, and mythologies. The interactions and exchanges between these cultures significantly shaped the biblical narratives, including the depiction of heavenly beings. During the time the Old Testament was being written, the Israelites were in contact with various powerful civilizations, such as the Egyptians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. These interactions were not only through trade and diplomacy, but also through periods of conquest and exile. For instance, the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BCE was a particularly influential period, as the Israelites were exposed to Babylonian religion, mythology, and iconography. This cross-cultural exchange inevitably influenced their own religious texts and concepts. The influence of neighboring cultures on the depiction of angels in the Bible is evident in the similarities between biblical angels and mythological creatures from other traditions. For example, the Lamassu of Assyrian and Babylonian mythology, which are protective deities with human heads, wings, and the bodies of bulls or lions, bear a striking resemblance to the biblical cherubim. These beings were thought to guard important locations, much like the cherubim guarding the Garden of Eden and the Ark of the Covenant. Similarly, the imagery of the seraphim with their multiple wings and fiery appearance can be traced back to Egyptian iconography. The Egyptian cobra, often referred to as the Flaming One, symbolized divine protection and royalty, much like the seraphim who are described as burning ones and serve as attendants to God's throne. The Urius, a representation of the cobra, was worn by pharaohs and symbolized their divine authority, echoing the seraphim's role in the heavenly hierarchy. The evolution of angelic depictions over time reflects the changing cultural and religious landscape. In early Israelite religion, angels were often seen as indistinguishable from humans, appearing as ordinary men who carried out God's will. As theological and cosmological ideas developed, so did the imagery associated with these beings. By the time of the later prophetic writings and the intertestamental period, angels had become more complex and otherworldly in their descriptions incorporating elements from various mythological traditions. In the medieval period, Christian theologians further systematized the hierarchy of angles, influenced by both biblical texts and the writings of early church fathers. The depiction of angels in art and literature became more standardized, with specific attributes assigned to different types of angels, such as the seraphim, cherubim, and archangels. This period saw the flourishing of angelology, the theological study of angels, which sought to categorize and explain the nature and functions of these celestial beings. The study of biblically accurate angels reveals a far more complex and awe-inspiring vision of these heavenly beings than the familiar serene images of popular culture. Throughout this video, we've explored the detailed descriptions and roles of, of various types of angels as presented in the Bible. We began with the origins and etymology of angels, highlighting their roles as messengers and protectors in the Old Testament. We then delved into the hierarchy of heavenly beings, understanding how different ranks and types of angels, such as the Malak, Cherubim, Seraphim, and Ophanim, fit into the divine order. The Cherubim, with their multifaceted and winged forms, stand as powerful guardians of sacred spaces. The Seraphim, 
known as the Burning Ones, continuously sing praises to God, reflecting their high status and fiery nature. The Ophanim, or Wheels, are mysterious and complex beings that symbolize the omnipresence and divine authority of God. We also examined other notable heavenly beings like the Archangels, who play pivotal roles as warriors and messengers. Comparing these biblical descriptions with cultural depictions from ancient civilizations such as the Assyrians, Babylonians, and Egyptians, we saw how cross-cultural influences shaped the imagery and understanding of angels. In reassessing the appearances of these heavenly beings, it becomes clear that the Bible presents a vision of angels that is both awe-inspiring and, at times, terrifying. These descriptions challenge the serene and benign images of angels popularized in art and media, offering instead a glimpse into the majestic and powerful nature of these celestial entities. Final Thoughts Understanding the true nature of angels as described in the Bible enriches our appreciation of these beings and their roles within the divine order. It also invites us to explore the profound and often complex symbolism that surrounds them. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into the world of biblically accurate angels, please like, comment, and subscribe for more explorations of fascinating topics. Thank you for watching.